get oh, the clicker? clicker? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Samantha. That was fantastic. That was uh, two really great uh, presentations. I, Nick, I had no idea that people would think a poem with VR. No idea. Um, and Samantha, that was really cool seeing how influence, influence has come to, to bear and how it can go through to, to kind of more mainstream content creation. That was, that was two great sessions. So um, about to join me on stage is uh, a good friend of mine that I've worked with for the last year and a half um, um, when I was at Deutsch. Uh, Christina Kozloff Peterson is the brand leader for Arvo. We're going to talk a little bit about the story of Arvo. So please join me and welcome Christina to the stage. There's two clickers. <laughs> I would choose the one that works. That one, I think, is. Uh... So what we're going to do uh, in a whistle-stop tour is tell you about the launch of Arvo, which Christina was instrumental in, um, which uh, we'll show you a little bit about the advertising. But we'll take you through the reality of when the advertising strategy met the humans involved and suddenly uh, collided. And there's a fun story around personalities and measurement. All the while, we were building a brand, and Christina was building a brand. So we'll quickly run through it, but let me uh, hand to Christina. She's going to tell you the story of Avo. Hi. So for the two-thirds of you in the room who have no idea what Avo is, it's where you go to find the right lawyer for you. Our mission is nothing less than being part of every legal transaction. And so it's not just about hiring or finding your attorney, but it's also about researching your legal issue. It's about legal services. We want to be part of everything, including uncontested divorces and wills and uh, incorporating your business. We've had a lot of growth since we started almost 10 years ago with great traffic to our site. We also have 97% of all attorneys participating on our site. So we've had a lot of great success, particularly on the supply side. But our marketing was pretty much focused on SEO, or what I like to call the accidental visitor. So I came on to help build the brand, and within a matter of months, we went from SEO to multitude of channels, and even a nationwide campaign, which was on TV, radio, digital, and social. Um, and we had some pretty simple goals for this campaign, traffic building and awareness. We had very low awareness. Low is code for zero. And <laughs> so we wanted to present Avo as the hero, as the solution to your, oh, sorry, as the solution to your legal problems. And quite frankly, when we did research into where we fit into the industry, we found that people had a hard time even pronouncing our name. So we had a lot of repetition. That was no accident. Can we play the first video? So this was launched on a, a limited uh, kind of regional basis. Then we rolled it out to a national campaign at the beginning of the year. And I am filling time because I need those five to be built. <laughs> Avo. I love Phoebe statues. I love you. Oh. Avo. Avo. <laughs> Avo. When you need a lawyer, start your search at Avo and find the lawyer who's right for you. Avo, let's find your lawyer. Great. And we felt really good about the measurement of this campaign. We, we still were in the very early stages, but we did see growth in awareness, and we saw growth in traffic. And more meaningfully, we didn't see, just see traffic, but we saw qualified traffic. They were doing what we wanted them to do. They were clicking on ads. They were hiring lawyers. We were really excited about that, and we felt pretty good about it. But when we went to present to our senior management, we saw a lot of this. Huh? <laughs> I don't get it. And more fun, we had lots of great questions, like, but how do you really measure advertising anyway? Can you even track TV? And my personal favorite, how do we know the attorneys aren't coming to the site and clicking on all of the ads themselves? <laughs> and it's hard to describe kind of this process. So, so I got involved right around this time. And um, we would have conversations of, 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 you know, how do we get through this? How do we get through the detail? And then we take a step back and be like, well, has awareness gone up? Yes. Has traffic gone up? Yes. OK, it's working. 
but it wasn't quite enough. So we got into a situation, which we'll talk about as we go through this, where these questions became themselves crazy. Yes, and as, as our confidence level increased and our analytic sophistication increased, our, we felt really good about where we were going in marketing. But in finance and our executive committee, that wasn't exactly the case. And that's where a lot of crazy stuff happened. So we started off <laughs> down here not knowing you know, marketing and, and analytics and the agency. We're not that confident, but we started to get ourselves organized. We got our shit together. Finance at that point seemed to go completely off the rails. <laughs> and we lived in this very strange intersection for quite a while. Yeah. So that's when I turned to our agency partners at Deutsche LA, and Duncan was heading up the analytics group. And he helped us to build a roadmap that would bring everybody on board the journey with us to understand how we can get more sophisticated in our measurement. And a lot of it was keeping calm. <laughs> so it, it started with a, a single brick and laying a foundation, and that was the roadmap. The roadmap was really putting stuff down on paper that we felt um, we needed to explain. And we went through the process of figuring out what we could measure, what we wanted to measure. And then we went through a pretty a complex process of calculating a baseline. So for those of you in the CPG world, you're kind of used to this concept of you have baseline sales, and then year over year, things lift them up to incremental sales. For Arvo and the leadership team, they had no sense of what baseline was, plus they'd seen years of significant growth. So we had to do um, quite a lot of work to calculate the baseline, um, and we knew it was going to be an ongoing basis. We also had something in the background um, where Zillow, um, there's some shared DNA between Zillow and Arvo in terms of investment, in terms of leadership. They talk to each other quite closely. Uh, there's board members that are, are connected. And Zillow have done a phenomenal job on analytics. So there was a little bit of sibling kind of rivalry or, or, or um, jealousy that we had to overcome as well. But anyway, we got through this first stage and presented to the executive team, which was a little bit like this. And if you can imagine me as a very uh, tall Harry Potter um, talking about wizardry and Hogwarts and people being, oh, this is kind of funny. This is unique. This is like weird British accent guy telling me about data. Um, <laughs> And it went OK, I think. But we, the most important thing is we got past that stage, that initial stage where you know, they looked at us weirdly, we moved forward, and then we started to get a little bit more, well, a lot more scientific. scientific. So we focused on drive, growing awareness, driving the incremental visits, and increasing the, the contacts to lawyers. And we started to really drill into the site metrics. So we got the research from. Uh, a, a number of awareness studies that we're doing. As you guys know from a research point of view, when you've got a single point in time and you do a quant study and then you've got a pre-post kind of quant study, there's not a lot of modeling or analysis you can do with that because it's just a single point in time in data. We experimented a lot. We're trying to build projections of awareness. And at one point, you know, the projections started to look kind of crazy because we only had two or three um, awareness points of data. So Christina and I developed a very scientific process, which can be described as the magic eight ball process. <laughs> and I was the magic eight ball. So we would go through, and Christine would say, I'm thinking of a number. And I'm like, is it 25? And she's like, yep, that's the number. Um, so we use quite a human, uh, what, what modelers call developing heuristics, which is otherwise known as educated guesses, to handle the awareness stuff over time. But on the site side, we've got boatloads of data, and we've got years of activity, and we've got a really interesting trend line. The key was what we had to, was, was to control for all the different things that were affecting site performance, a lot of which is way out of the hands of, of brand and marketing. It can be the product experience. It can be the seasonality of certain events. We already had a suspicion that certain types of legal activity didn't take place at certain times of the year. People, there's this theory, general accepted theory that people tend to wait to get through the holidays to get divorced. People tend to see a spike. There tends to be a spike in uh, DUIs around the holiday time at certain points that all have an impact on people searching for legal help. So we went through this process. And if you flip to the next slide, um, we did start simple. And um, we went through uh, establishing the baseline, the average campaign period, and tried to normalize for those other factors. And then we started to iterate. And at this point, we started to take a step back and think, well, how's Arvo going to do this over time? So Deutsch was doing all this work in-house. That's not really a sustainable position for the long term. Um, for those of you on the agency side, it's, it's really, it's come 
I've come to the conclusion that the client's got to have some skin in the game. They can't devolve all the heavy analytics to the agency because the client starts to question it, the brand team starts to not feel ownership, and then it becomes a bigger issue at the CEO level. So as part of the roadmap establishment, we also doubled down and threw lots of Deutsch resources at it, but also said it's time for you guys to find the right talent to join your team internally so you could feel some ownership. Because remember, we've still got that crazy shit to explain about the weird questions that we'll come back to in a moment. So if you flip to the next slide, we really started to build the house at this point, and then we can move ahead actually to the next one. So we used a series of advanced modeling techniques, fundamentally regression-based stuff similar to marketing mix modeling, um, really got into the data, started to see models that made sense, like they looked right, they felt right, the diagnostics were right, but then we start to get this little kind of other side of the equation coming in, which is, um, what about attribution modeling? What, how do we know that we should be using last click attribution? Shouldn't we be using um, different clicks? Um, do or, you want to come in on that? first click, that was even a question. Yeah, and and raise your hands, anyone heard of first click attribution? <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it was a little scary. It's uh, not a thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not a thing. Um, the, 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 one of uh, Christina's more technical colleagues uh, in a sentence managed to argue for and against last click <laughs> attribution in the same sentence, and then proposed to say, well, we should be just using first click attribution, and we're scratching our heads going, yeah, that's not a thing. Um, <laughs> so we've, we've got this ongoing thing about attribution, and for those of you, if we move to the next slide, um, for those of you um, that know attribution modeling, actually probably go to the, yeah. this, so this is, attribution generally has stuck in this last click world and now over the last three, four, five years, it's really evolved into more of a multi-touch attribution methodology that's absolutely the right way to do it. Um, the question is, you know, do you do that algorithmically? Do you do that heuristically? Or do you do it um, predictively or statistically? So there's different ways you can look at attribution. But everyone agrees that, that the, the attribution uh, methods uh, are really starting from the bottom, right? So they're starting from the bottom of where people are acting, and they're designed to explain activity bottom up. Now, on the flip side, remember, we've spent the last few, the early part of the year talking about top down. So we've been trying to allocate money, resources, investment from a marketing mixed modeling perspective, and that's top down, a strategic process going all the way down. And we've got this world of, of confusion within um, the executive team, and now we've got one of the most complicated things to get your head around. So we talked about Clorox the other day, like you guys are masters over here of doing marketing mix modeling. Have you, have you like, at, and then integrating attribution into that is like, it's kind of a mashup, right? You can go from being incredible on one side and being school children on the other or vice versa. So we had to, to work through that. Um, the good news is, on this side, we did some really cool stuff. We established the ad stock. So how long does the media last in market? Um, we got confident to say that at least we got a sense of how long the media was affecting it. We got really good data. That was part of the discipline of getting this all together. We started collecting the right data. We developed some techniques at Deutsch that were pretty, pretty good. Arvo hired to me, like the statistics unicorn. Do you want to talk about Jan Tau briefly and just kind of say that how that went? Yeah, so we were, it really was a unicorn. I cannot replicate how we found her, and I'm not going to say her name out loud because <laughs> I, did, I will sorry. personally kill you if you steal her from us. But she is a PhD. She was a professor at a local university in Seattle, and she walked in knowing exactly how to answer all of our questions. All of the issues that were coming up that we were struggling to push through with our executive team, she knew exactly how to build the models, exactly how to communicate in the right way, and she's really been just a huge asset to us, so much so that now Zillow calls me asking if they can borrow her. <laughs> right, so we've had this amazing reversal of fortune of like Zillow going, hey, we got this down, we don't need your help, to going, well, can we, can we borrow that person that you've got doing this work? So it's been, it's been a real transformation. And the, 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 the bit about our background is, she worked for Nielsen for many years, so, she, so early in her career, she was kind of doing, you know, Nielsen IRI, they, they do this like a factory. You're a little bit like a battery hen producing eggs, and the eggs are marketing mixed models, but you learn the intricacies of it, right? And then she went back to school and became really advanced, so it was a, is a really unique combination. One, one comment on attribution is, is what Arvo did, and, and, and we weren't, we, 
you know, it, Deutsche's an agency takes a somewhat neutral approach to attribution because, you know, in many cases we're buying the media, so it's, it's a little bit tricky. So Arvo went out and evaluated all the different um, attribution vendors and looked at the widely divergent costs and implementation regimes and selected on a vendor that, that was using more of a heuristic rule-based approach to attribution. And that was really helpful because we've got this huge amount of science and statistics on the marketing mix side that if we'd have had it on the attribution side as well, I think heads would have exploded. So the, the, the attribution process is more buttoned down, it's more about data, it's more about let's test and learn, uh, and it's less about, okay, how does this regression model implement in the attribute? We, we, we kind of dumbed it down, a, not, that's not fair. It, wasn't, it, was, it was advanced and, and um, scientific, it just didn't introduce yet more complication into the process. Mm -hmm. If we move to the next one. So then we come back to the executive board, and this, this is me doing breakdancing, <laughs> um, probably the closest I'll ever get to actually doing breakdancing. Um, but we came through this process, and part of it was, you know, the CEO's an attorney, and I had to survive cross-examination on a multi-stage process, and, and I the survived. The Socratic method of being interrogated. <laughs> <laughs> I was severely cross-examined, and we got to the point where we got internal resources, we got a, a roadmap of measurement, we got the CEO in a reasonable good place where he, he advocates what he's done now publicly. Do you want to... I'm telling your story. Do you yeah, I mean, you just said exactly what he does. Yeah, no, he, he does tell it as a very positive story. So it's, we've definitely brought them on board. They, they're they definitely feeling a lot better. It's not to say that we still don't have many miles to go. I think it's fair to say, but we've definitely made some huge inroads. So that would be the learning I would take from this. I don't know what it was. We kind of move to the next slide and maybe think about um, the, the skeptics are still there, right? That there's still... Uh, and I see this universally, especially in executive teams on client side. You might win the CMO over, which we did from the beginning, and you might win over product, which I think we did pretty mm -hmm. early. Uh, you've got this wild card of technology, which come in and out of helping you and hindering you, but ultimately they know that it's not really in their interest to fight this fight. And then you've got your big outliers of the CEO and the CFO. And the CEO, as I say, we survived that cross-examination but really, we still have the junior skeptic or maybe a senior skeptic in the CFO, which I don't think is ever going to go away. Right. There, there's still an ongoing challenge with the constant, what's your short-term ROI? And then in the startup industry, one of the most wonderful things is when various CEOs whisper in your own CEO or CFO's ear, and that just creates a lot more questions and skepticism. So we're constantly battling that every day. And, and I think the big learning I would put to the audience is that there isn't a method, there isn't a panacea approach. It's really, it becomes very human. And it's almost like a sociology, psych, psychology experiment of understanding people's motivations. And for me, the aha is when I knew that I had to get, I had, I had to let the CEO cross-examine me and enjoy it <laughs> and keep going. That was when I understood him. I, we couldn't quite do the same with the CFO. It was never quite. It's, it's also time-based, too. I, I had a conversation with the folks at Google, and they were trying to convince me that they could develop a model with only three to six months of data. And the fact of the matter is, the more data, the more time you have, the better your model. So we're still in the early stages. We're only about 14 months in. So around 18 months, I will have a greater degree of confidence, but it does take time. But if you want to move to the uh, next campaign, talk about so where I you are. So I think the next one is actually our second video, which I'll just speak to you briefly. So we evolved our campaign a bit. We still want Avo to be the hero, but we've created a more human campaign where it's about real people in real situations where they have a legal need. So could we play the second video? Nearly half of us will need a lawyer this year. Find the right one for you on Avo. Avo, legal easier. 
So when I look back on it, um, the, the, there's like multiple levels of the story we're trying to tell. We told you a lot of detail about measurement and analytics, right? But the, the great news is, is that as the organization has moved forward, they've moved forward, right? They've not waited for universal understanding of measurement and they've continued to grow and they've continued to innovate. Um, and I think we've made some huge progress on the measurement side as well. Um, but we believe the truth is still out there in terms of measurement and we believe that there, you know, certain people can be convinced. Um, so I look at this as very much a very positive story. I think there's been times when maybe you were glass half empty and I was glass half full. We're still in the crazy shit phase. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> but it's getting better. <laughs> so yeah, that was, that was kind of, we were, we were struggling, like how do we end this? You know, we wish that we had like a, a wonderful bow to put it on, but I think that's the best phrase of them all. We are still in the crazy shit phrase, <laughs> phase, but it's been an interesting ride. So thank you very much.